Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. Today is Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Taking a look at our solar wind speeds right now, this is the lowest we've seen in a while, coming in at 307.5 kilometers per second with a density of 3.9. Looking at our sun once again, 20 days in a row now without sunspots, 189 days in 2019 giving us a total of 71 percent of the days this year are without sunspots so definitely in minimum conditions we are actually 10 percent higher in that category as far as days without sunspots from last year and we had 221 days in 2018 without sunspots our tci coming in at 4.21 and my only suspicion on why we're seeing re readings in the fours at all, which by the way, the record, the, the space age record is 2.05. 4.21 is still very, very, very cold. The record warm is 49 point something. I don't remember exactly, but the only thing I can think of why we might be seeing TCI elevated slightly into the fours has to do with something with the sudden stratospheric warming that we've had in the Southern hemisphere. So. I can imagine that does uh, contribute in some ways, but still, giving that perspective, uh, we're still pretty cold as far as TCI is concerned. All right, KP indice is at a zero right now, and our 24-hour max is at a one. And let's take a look at this monster coronal hole that is forming uh, just off Earth facing. We've got a little bit of action to talk about today. Uh, first, we've got the coronal hole that is just now turning away from Earth, which, by the way, we are experiencing low solar wind. That will pick up sometime today, early tomorrow, as that coronal hole should be affecting us. Not really predicting any G1 geomagnetic storms, but, but, and I'll get to the but here in a second, we do have an additional um, event to watch as well. But look back here, just to our left, this coronal hole. And when it turns towards Earth, it really opens up here in the last few frames. So this coronal hole has developed very fast. Uh, that one will probably see the effects between the 25th through the 26th, possibly the 27th, it just depends. Um, but also on top of looking at these coronal holes and, and increasing in possible solar wind speeds, we will also have to watch for this CME event. And right here, we're looking to your right, this very large plume of a CME, a corona mass injection, but nothing massive, nothing impressive. This is weak. And for any of you who have followed these instruments here, where you go look at the sun and the CMEs, you'll notice that you've never quite seen such weak C the, if this is considered a cme you should have seen things a couple years ago some of these cmes are massive and explosive so this one here is expected to graze earth's um magnetic field so we've got the corona holes to deal with we have the cme our kp is at zero uh, something's about to pop folks whether it's a volcano or earthquake but guarantee in the next two to three days we will be seeing something in the news about a 6.5 or higher earthquake possibly a 7.0 or higher or maybe another volcano popping off at the 30,000 to 40,000 range so this is going to be an interesting week as far as space weather and seismicity is concerned but more on this coronal or this CME uh, basically, NASA's Stereo A spacecraft photographed the jet-like storm cloud leaving the sun on September 20th. NOAA forecasters have analyzed the CME's trajectory and find it that it could graze Earth's magnetic field on September 25th. The source of the CME was an explosion in the sun's southern hemisphere. A magnetic filament erupted, hurling part of itself into space. The debris dragged part of the sun's atmosphere along with it, forming the CME. Even minor CME strikes tend to do a good job at causing geomagnetic storms. In combination with solar wind stream expected to arrive just ahead of it, the CME could spark a good display of Arctic auroras during the first nights of autumn. So 
we've got a lot of space weather to tend with right now. You've got one decent sized corona hole affecting us today and tomorrow. This CME, when it arrives, so when the solar wind does uh, die down, we'll see possibly some minor effects from the CME. And then right after that, we're probably going to be dealing with a much larger situation when it comes to solar wind as this corona hole continues to grow as it turns towards Earth. This is also a time where we have seen this as well when we get these multiple corona holes and large ones. This is also where we see sunspots just emerge and dissipate just as quick as they emerge. So I am not going to be surprised if we see a development, a rapid development of an active region somewhere around these corona holes that breaks that 20, 21 day streak of sunspots uh, not being present and decay within 46 to 48 or 36 to 48 hours. So again, just speculation. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying it's going to happen. But conditions for this type of stuff are very, very, very favorable. But in other words, we have a lot of space weather to track this week. And so, again, this is just a watch. I'm putting it out there. Uh, be aware that we are dealing with some space weather. So if we do get uh, volcanoes or earthquakes uh, or even strengthening of storms, and I'll get into that right now. Let's go ahead and check out our national forecast here at the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. And right now we're going to be dealing with some rain showers in the northeast through Ohio, parts of uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, all the way down to Texas. Some severe weather possible uh, in the far corners of Arizona and possibly some in the southeastern region of California. But other than that, the rest of the nation all is quiet. The north, northern plains especially needs the break. Uh, for sure the northwest as well they had a lot of rain they were dealing with yesterday and the southeast quiet for once so let's go ahead and get into what i was talking about oh there's our cloud coverage so even though we have quiet weather this is what we're looking at for cloud coverage today and i think i'm going to start keeping track of this because it's important especially when we talk about cosmic rays seeding our atmosphere or seeding the clouds i should say helping cloud nucleation and I think if people get a visualization of how intense the cloud coverage is on a daily basis, you know, again, there's no rain or anything expected for most of the northern plains in the northwest, but it's going to be a cloudy day for the most part. So, all right, now let's take a look at our storms. This is Tropical Storm Karen, and this is a very peculiar storm, and I think because of the way the jet is moving right now, it's given us a strange track for that reason as well. Um, but this is what they're thinking right now on Tropical Storm Karen. Oh wait, is this a different system? Let's go to this one. That is Tropical, that, that's the uh, Tropical Storm 13 right here, but, so yeah, it is Karen. No, that's Jerry I was just showing you. All right, folks, it's Monday morning, all right? Give me, give me some break here, come on. So that's Jerry doing its thing, not much of anything. It's going to get carried away. But what I wanted to talk about was Karen, because Karen has a strange path right now. Uh, I don't think anybody forecasted this. And the reason why I want to share this, Karen, the right one now, it's going to go due north and then make a curve towards the east coast. It gets crazier on some of these models. I'm gonna zoom out of this and show you. Uh, this storm, some people are projecting some pretty crazy models here. Some are projecting this thing is going straight north. Um, I'll tell you this. I know one guy who has been calling for an October storm to hit New Jersey, New York City. Right now, the models are 50-50 about going due north or taking a sharp turn to the left. Now, if the tracks going towards the Bahamas are correct, uh, this is going to hit the same area that just got Dorian. So either way, guys, it's going to be kind of a tragic situation uh, no matter what category this storm develops into. Now, according to our... Uh, our outlook on this track of this storm uh 
it's only going to be a tropical storm, e even as it makes its left turn. So that's the good news. The fact that they're not predicting this to be a hurricane at any point, but tropical depression 13 behind it, that one is a little different. But again, we can notice the track of this storm is also in a peculiar track to where it maybe it continues to head towards the corner of the east coast as well too early to tell karen is definitely though something to keep our eyes on folks uh let's give it a cup quick check right now it's got 40 mile an hour wind sustain it's moving northwest at eight miles per hour with a pressure of a thousand and seven jerry that's just kind of meandering out here it's got 65 mile an hour wind so it's not a hurricane anymore Pressure of 993 millibars, and it's moving north northwest at nine miles per hour. And right now, tropical storm or tropical depression 13 is about to turn into tropical storm 13 here just a little bit. Uh, winds of 35 miles an hour, pressure of 1,007. So the same as Karen right now, and the pressure moving a little bit faster west at 15 miles per hour as well. So why this is important why i wanted to go over all three of the storms is because this week is going to be full of space weather that we're going to be dealing with increased solar winds it's going to bring an abundance of cosmic rays into our atmosphere and we had two geomagnetic storms when dorian was still developing so i guess what i'm saying is we need to watch what happens to these storms how the atmosphere interacts with these particularly karen and 13. jerry's predicted to move off into the middle of the atlantic but karen could be a threat to the bahamas and florida and i've heard some predictions that once it leaves florida it's going to continue to go into the gulf and possibly hit alabama so this is going to be a weird storm for sure because it could strengthen in the gulf as well it could reorganize and slow way down in the gulf and get strengthened before it makes landfall. Again, this is all speculation, guys. I, I'm, I'm just putting out there what I've heard as far as forecasts. And I'll tell you, I'd be curious to see if there is any indication on the tropical tidbits as far as where this storm is going to be in the next couple of days. So let's see if we can even get a sneak peek of this storm here at Tropical Tidbits. As we roll through, there's Jerry finally being lifted off. We don't see Karen yet. Now, if I had to guess, GFS is pretty much, in my opinion, they're not really worried about Karen because this shows me that this storm's not developed yet. Are the waters too cool? Let's see what happens as the storm moves further east that low pressure i mean gfs doesn't even have this thing staying together so that's good news boy there's a huge low pressure system so tropical storm 13 is not showing up in this storm track yet as well so the good news so far and it's early is that we don't have anything to worry about yet as far as any tropical weather uh GFS is simply not indicating it, but this is the 06 model. So tonight when we go live at 9 p.m., we'll go over this model again and see where, if at all, that um, this storms will be something to worry about because the, some models have this storm coming through the Bahamas over to Florida and then making landfall somewhere around here again. So again i'm not seeing it it's way too early this is for the 29th of september is when this thing starts showing up so we've still got some time before this th storm even approaches the bahamas or even anywhere near the east coast so yeah tonight will be a decent show because we got a lot of talk about space weather hurricanes possibly and looking at this gfs map here it looks like we'll be talking about some cold weather as well because we've got snow coming in from the north Canada spilling into the lower 50, uh, 48, 58. Wow. Again, I want to give a shout out to Soul216. Thank you very much. Soul Quest, I should say. Um, and 
hey, you know, chin up today, right? We have something to be proud of. Our team actually looked like they belonged in the spotlight. So not a bad performance, but uh, on to next week, right? We're, we're moving on to Baltimore. But thanks again, SoulQuest. We, uh, much appreciated for your super chat. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning's update. Uh, we will be live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, guys, we will talk soon. Take care. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.